Hello again, everyone. In this lecture, I want to talk a little bit more about first order ODEs. In particular, I want to talk about first order linear ordinary differential equations. This is a class of differential equations that you can solve no matter what it is. And that's one of the only, only types of differential equation that we can solve no matter what. So if it's a first order linear ODE, you can solve it, at least in theory, and I'm going to show you how. So that's what we're going to do in this pre-lecture. Okay, so let's talk about first order linear ODEs. This ODE has the following form. y dot of t plus p of t times y of t is equal to q of t. Okay, so this is the general form of a first order linear ODE. It's first order, you can tell there's only one derivative there, y dot, that's dy dt. And then this term here has only one y in it, so that makes it linear. And this term here has no y's in it, so it's linear. And then um, these functions here, p and t, p and q are known. So these guys are known functions. And like always with uh, ODEs, my goal here is to solve what is y of t. So the goal is uh, find y of t. Okay. So we always define the p of t as the function multiplying the y, and the q is the function on the other side, which uh, is not multiplying anything. Every first order linear equation can be put in this form. So you notice that this is not necessarily separable. Um, we can write this equation like this, y dot of t is equal to q of t minus p of t times y of t, like this. And um, it doesn't necessarily separate if that q function is not zero. So this is not necessarily of the form uh, f of t times g of t, uh, g of y, right? We said that if the, 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 the t dependence and the y dependence factorized, then I could separate the y from the t and, and do the integral using the, the techniques we learned for separation of variables, but you can't do that in general here. So how can you solve these in general? Here's the general method. to the first order linear equation. First step is put it into standard form. Which is the one I mentioned above. Uh, which is that y dot of t plus p of t times y of t is equal to q of t. For example, you might run across an equation that looks like this, 2y dot plus, let's say, 3ty is equal to 4t squared. Okay. That's not of the same form as this, because the y dot is not multiplied by 1. So if I have an equation which has the y dot multiplied by something, I need to divide by this. And then I would have y dot plus 3 over 2ty equals 2t squared. And then comparing it with the standard form, I can tell that the p of t is the 3 halves t. That's the thing multiplying the y. And the q of t is the 2c squared. Right? Okay. So you got to make it so that the y dot term is by itself. It's not being multiplied by anything. Okay, now the second step is you multiply by a function. By uh, this thing called mu of t. So mu of t is called an integrating factor. And we'll talk about what the properties this mu of t has to obey in order for it to work. So right now it's just a function mu of t, which I'm going to multiply both sides. So I get mu of t 
y dot of t plus p of t mu of t y of t equals mu of t times q of t. Okay. So what's the point of that? I mean, the point is all I did is just multiply both sides by this unknown function, which we call an integrating factor. But the key is if this function mu satisfies certain properties, we'll be able to write the left side as a total derivative. So I'm going to show you what this uh, integrating factor has to obey. So let me write the left hand side as, um, or let me, let me do a little side note here. d by dt of mu of t times y of t. What is that? Uh, from the product rule, that's mu dot of t times y of t plus mu of t times y dot of t. And let me write this one other way. So let me subtract this term here to the other side. So I'm going to have here uh, d by dt mu of t y of t minus mu dot of t y of t is equal to uh, mu of t times y dot of t. And now compare this with the equation I've got above. So this was my first order linear ODE. And on this side here, I've got mu times y dot. But then what I just showed here is that mu times y dot is equal to this whole thing. So I'm going to substitute this in above sub into the ODE. What do I get? I get um, d by dt mu of t times y of t minus mu dot y of t maybe make it mu dot of t y of t and then I've got my plus p of t mu of t y of t equals to mu of t q of t. And let me com combine the y terms d by dt mu of t y of t plus uh, y of t times what do I have? I've got p of t times mu of t minus mu dot of t equals to mu of t times q of t. Okay, so so far I've just done some algebraic man manipulations. I multiplied the left side, or actually multiplied both sides by this mu of t, and then I just uh, have rewritten it in this funny way. What's the point of this? The point is that you see the left side here, this is a total derivative, and the mu was an arbitrary function. So if I choose my mu so that this term is zero, then I would be able to integrate both sides. Okay, because mu I could I know and q I know. So in other words, this side is known. If I know mu. Okay, so this could be known. If my mu is chosen such that this middle term is zero, I can integrate both sides and solve for y. So that's the key insight, is that let's choose mu of t such that this is 0. So my mu of t is going to have to satisfy its own ordinary differential equation. Mu dot of t is equal to p of t times mu of t. Okay. If I can find a function mu which satisfies this, remember that the p is known, so this is known, and then I can find mu so that it satisfies this equation, then I can solve my original ODE. So this can be integrated 
So if uh, I can find a mu of t which satisfies uh, this, then my ODE becomes come on becomes this d by dt mu of t y of t is equal to mu of t q of t like this. and then I can integrate both sides so I'll slap an integral here and an integral here so the left side is the integral of a derivative and I get mu of t y of t is equal to uh, c, I'm putting a constant here, plus integral mu of t, q of t. Now there's a little bit of confusion that sometimes you'll see that the thing on the left side, this is the variable y of t, but here this is an integration variable, dt. So the way that I'm going to write this is as follows. I'm going to change this. This is a dummy variable. Remember, I can call it anything I want. I'm going to call it t tilde. Okay, so it's just some other name of some variable, but it's not the same as the left side. The left side is the, the independent variable, the function t. And then I'm going to put here a t here at the upper limit. So what does this mean? It means do this integral. do this integral and then plug in t for t tilde everywhere. It's just important to keep track of the fact that this variable here is different than the integration variable there. Okay, and that's why I'm doing this. I added an arbitrary constant because I had integrals on each side, so this is an arbitrary constant. Okay, so I added it just to make it clear that there will be an arbitrary constant on both sides. And finally I can divide by the mu. So what do I get here? I get y of t is equal to c plus integral the upper limit is t, mu of t tilde, q of t tilde, dt tilde, divided by mu of t, just like that. And maybe I can write it in two separate terms, c divided by mu of t, plus uh, 1 over mu of t, integral t, mu of t tilde, q of t tilde, dt tilde. So this is my solution for the function y. c is an arbitrary constant, mu is in, as the integrating factor, and to get mu you have to solve this equation up at the top here, this one here. And once I know mu, I know q because it was part of the original differential equation. Uh, you determine this. And then you put it inside this integral, do the integral, and then you've got your function y of t. So this is the solution for any first order linear ODE. Okay. So it's kind of amazing that no matter what the function is, or what the ODE is, I know the p of t and I know the q of t, so first thing I have to do is find this integrating factor mu, and then just construct this solution which I have in the box there, and do the integral if you can, and then you've got your solution for y of t. Notice, uh, let me point out one thing, it's important that I keep these two things um, separate, the t tilde and the t, because sometimes students are tempted to bring this inside and then cancel that with that. You can't do that because they have different variables. Okay, so that's that's one reason I'm making it clear that those are two different variables. This cannot be canceled with that. Don't do that. Okay. 
All right, last thing I have to explain is how do I get mu of t? So how do I get the integrating factor? Remember that we chose it so that uh, mu dot of t was equal to p of t times mu of t. Okay, that was the whole idea, right? The whole idea was that I wrote my ODE in this form, and then I chose mu of t. Let's assume that I can pick it so that this thing vanishes. And in order for that to be true, my integrating factor has to satisfy this equation here. And if it does, then I have the solution to the first order linear ODE in the black box there. Okay, so how do I solve this equation? This is a separable equation. Okay, so this is d mu dt is equal to p of t times mu of t. So now let's uh, separate both sides. So I'll have here d mu over mu is equal to p of t dt. And then integrate both sides. So on this side, I've got natural log of mu. And then I'm going to have, I'm, let me put the plus c explicitly, c plus uh, integral p of t dt. And then let me raise it to the e. So natural e to the natural log mu is e to the c plus integral p of t dt. And we've seen this a few times. Let me break that into two pieces, e to the c, e to the integral p of t dt. And so on the left side, I've got mu of t is equal to some other constant. Let me call this like uh, a, I guess. Doesn't matter, it's some arbitrary constant. a e to the integral p of t dt. So there's my solution for mu. Remember, I know p because p was in the ODE, in the, the original ODE that I had. It had two functions which I know, p of t and q of t. So p I know. That means I can integrate that. And then if I take e to that, I have my mu of t. So then I know mu of t. And this works no matter what the value of a is. So it works no matter what the value of a is. Works for any value of a. And that usually you can just pick the most simple case. So typically uh, we'll choose a equals to 1 just because it's the simplest case and then I don't have to worry about it. Okay? Let me try to summarize how to solve an ODE of this form. y dot plus p of t times y equals q of t. I know both p and q. First thing you do is you find an integrating factor. And to do that, I take uh, e to the integral p of t dt. And by the way, when you do this, there's no need to add any arbitrary constant when you do this integral. So there's no need to add plus c because we argued above that no matter what the value of c is, I'm still going to have a valid integrating factor. And so I can just choose the plus c to be 0, or alternatively, the same thing is I'm choosing the a to be 1. So first thing, find your integrating factor. Second thing, uh, use the general solution, which is y of t is equal to an arbitrary constant over mu of t plus 1 over mu of t 
integral mu of t tilde q of t tilde dt tilde. So those are the two most important equations when solving a first order linear ODE. First find your integrating factor by doing this integral of p dt and then take the e exponent of that and that gives you your integrating factor. Once you know mu, then you go to this second equation in the black box here and you have one more integral to do to determine y. Okay? And you I've included the c's explicitly, so You've already got the C here. I added it explicitly. So when you do this integral, you also don't need to add plus C. So no need to add plus C to either of these integrals. Also, let me reemphasize one really important point is that to use these formulas, the ones in the boxes, you must write your equation in this form. You have to get the Y dot by itself. Okay, and so if there's something multiplying the y dot, you need to divide both sides in order to put it in this form. So if your first order ODE is linear, you first can put it in this form just by dividing whatever is in front of the y dot. And once you have that, you calculate your integrating factor, and then you put it in this form, do that last integral, and you've determined y. We'll do some examples of this in class. So in this Pre-lecture, we talked about how to solve a general first-order linear ordinary differential equation. If you ever run across a first-order linear ordinary differential equation, you can solve it using this method. Okay, so um, thanks again for your attention. We'll do some examples to illustrate this method in class. See you all then.